Hello, in today's class we are going to learn about a very important concept in environmental science called biomagnification. This is fundamental that you understand this concept in order to better understand the environmental fate of pollutants and why it affects living beings all over the environment. Now, I have with me a glass of water. Now, let us assume that I am going to pollute this water with a pollutant. So I introduce a small drop of pollutant, the pollutant is mixing inside the water and now the water is polluted but it is just a small glass of water and let us assume that I, what I have introduced into this glass of water is mercury and uh, the concentration of this solution is about 1 ppm, okay, this is just for the sake of learning. So the concentration of the pollutant in this small glass of water is 1 ppm which means parts per million or milligrams per liter okay now i'm going to take this glass of water and i'm going to ask you to magnify it in your mind and make this glass of water into a large body of water such as a pond okay now i asked you to imagine that we are going to see a large body of water so imagine that this is a very large body of water okay and in this water it is polluted with about 1 ppm or 1 milligram per liter of say mercury okay now this is our initial assumption okay now we have around 1 ppm of the pollutant inside the water body and we are now going to see how this 1 ppm is going to magnify into a much larger concentration when it moves through the food chain or it when it moves from one trophic level to the other or it then moves higher and higher and higher through the food chain okay now let us assume that this one ppm is being eaten up or absorbed into the body of say four small microscopic plants called phytoplanktons so each of them will assimilate around 1 ppm of the pollutant into their body. Okay, till this is clear, the concentration of the pollutant is 1 ppm. Each of these phytoplanktons has absorbed 1 ppm. Now, along comes a very small fish and it will consume all these phytoplanktons into its body for its regular feeding purpose. Now this particular chemical is persistent and it does not get broken down in the body of the fish which means it gets accumulated in the body of the small fish and the fish has now consumed at least for assumption purpose it has consumed at least four phytoplanktons each containing a concentration of 1 ppm which means inside the body of the fish we have 4 ppm which is because 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 more 1 ok this may sound very very simple for you but this is meant to make you understand the concept of biomagnification now inside the body of the fish you have 4 ppm now let us assume that there are 4 such fishes so these are you will have to bear with me these are fishes ok now these 4 fishes are now consumed by a much larger fish. Now what will be the concentration of the pollutant in this bigger fish? Just as before, each of this fish is now going to have 4 ppm in its body because each of those fishes are going to consume around 4 phytoplanktons, each containing 1 ppm that translated to 4 ppm within each fish so 4 into 4 and now it has 16 ppm of the pollutant in its body and where did we start with? we started with just 1 milligram per liter or 1 ppm so if you eat this fish this is supposed to be you let us imagine, if you eat this fish, now if you consume this fish, you will get 16 ppm of 
the pollutant inside your body. And this, my friends, is biomagnification. Because through the food chain, starting from the lowest organism, which is the phytoplanktons, or even the zooplanktons, it has moved up the food chain to the smaller fish, to the bigger fish, and then finally to the human being. And this is what happens in nature, where the concentration, although it begins at a very, very small level, magnifies as it moves through the food chain and finally you get a very high concentration which is called biomagnification. This is very, very important that you understand it. Now, uh, biomagnification generally occurs when the magnification process takes place through the food chain or through the trophic levels or from one trophic level to the other trophic level and at each trophic level the amount of pollutant or the concentration of the pollutant keeps on increasing. Now if that particular pollutant concentration increases in only one trophic level and it stays there, it gets accumulated, then that process is called bioaccumulation and not biomagnification. So there are two separate distinct terms, biomagnification and bioaccumulation. You should be very clear in the distinction between these two. This is bioaccumulation. Okay. When it stays within one trophic level. Now what do I mean when it stays within one trophic level? That means this is one trophic level or this is the other trophic level and this is the third trophic level and this is the fourth trophic level. So you have one, two, three, four, four trophic levels. And in biomagnification what happens? When the pollutant at an initial concentration of 1 ppm moves from one trophic level through the different trophic levels up to the fourth trophic level, the concentration increases and 1 becomes 16. But in bioaccumulation what happens? The pollutant generally tends to accumulate in any one trophic level. This is the very, very general or basic fundamental understanding of bioaccumulation and more importantly biomagnification. Now what are the kind of chemicals that can result in biomagnification? Not all chemicals result in biomagnification in nature and the example that I have given you here is in the aquatic environment. This can happen in also the terrestrial environment in soil and lead up to human beings also. So one of the most famous examples is that of DDT, which is a very, very famous pesticide. Okay? And one of the most important chemicals in, which is responsible for biomagnification in the aquatic environment is mercury, which is referred as HG, mercury. So these are chemicals which generally do not get degraded and stay in the environment or they are called persistent and uh, they are some of these chemicals are more popularly known as POPs or POPs which means persistent organic pollutants. So all of these concepts should be there in your mind when you study the environmental fate of any pollutant. Any pollutant when it enters into the environment will cause damage to the biotic constituents of the environment through this process which is understood as biomagnification or bioaccumulation. And you should be clear about the difference between biomagnification and bioaccumulation and this is fundamental in understanding why a particular pollutant is extremely harmful to the environment even at even if it enters the environment in very very low concentrations because as we have seen in this lecture even if the pollutant enters initially at a very low concentration it will magnify in its concentration as it moves through the food chain from one trophic level to the next.